So how about another problem where we've been asked to find slope? What is the slope of the line pictured below, it says? And once again, like we said before in our last video, how you go about finding slope is going to depend on what you've been given. And once again, we can see we've been given here a graph. This is a graph. More specifically, what kind of graph is it? It's a coordinate plane. Some teachers might call it an XY plane or a Cartesian coordinate plane, but we can see there's the X axis there, there's the Y axis there, and we're looking at an intersection of X and Y, and so it's a um, coordinate plane. Now, I've been asked to find the slope of a line again, and if you remember, when given a graph, the way to find the slope of the line is to look at how fast it is actually moving upwards by considering the ratio of rise over run. How much the line is rising over how much the line is running. Well, how you tell you um, how steep your line is. Uh, so let's give it a try. First of all, I'd just like to point out that whatever answer I get better be positive. Because you see this line going up here? It is moving upwards. That is definitely a positive slope, but we're not done until we have a distinct number that represents the slope. So what we will do is once again, as I stated before, I will start on a corner. It makes my life easier if I start on a corner because it's just easier to read that point. Like if I wanted to start right here, I know this is a one, but like what's that? Is that a half? Is that a third? I'm not totally sure. It's so way better to use corners. Once you have your starting point and your end point, you're going to be able to count how much you're rising and how much you're running. Now please do remember that we are going to start on the left and um, end on the right and it'll make our lives easier. You have to do extra work and deal with signs a little more if you start on the right and go left. I promise you, um, you'll struggle less if you do it this way. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the other way, you just have to account for signs. So let's take a look here. If I want to start at this point and rise to that point, we do our rise movement first, or our vertical movement first, because sometimes we actually fall down. I can see that this is a change of one, two on this graph. Starting from here and moving up to there, I moved two um, on the graph. And I ran over this way, one. And so I went from a zero to one, and so I ran one. And so my rise here is two, my run here is one, I get two over one. And this is a correct answer, however, it is not yet done. It is not yet done, because as you know, all final fraction answers should be simplified. Um, yes, reduced, um, but in this case it's even easier than reducing. Uh, I shouldn't say it's easier than reducing. Um, this is one that needs to be simplified, not reduced, because 2 divides by 1 perfectly. 2 divided by 1 is just 2. And some teachers teach that you can drop a denominator of 1, and that's true, um, but why? Because 2 divided by 1 is just 2. And remember, a fraction bar means the same as divide by. So there we go, that particular line has a slope of 2.